Hey guys, as it turns out, you actually listen to all the crap I talk in my videos. In my 3D camera tracker tutorial, I had a handheld shot that happened to contain a motorcycle and I asked you to leave a comment if you wanted a tutorial on how to blow it up. All of the comments I got on that video were along the lines of oh, yeah. Yeah, Exactly! So, because you asked for it, let's blow up some more stuff today. I will assume that you all already watched my 3D camera tracker tutorial. If you haven't yet, this link will take you straight to it. Now, to realistically blow up the motorcycle in that handheld shot, we first need to track our footage just like we did before. Next, we need to set up a number of layers to hide the motorcycle once it's been blown up. Then we can add some cool stock footage explosions, some smoke, some shrapnel particles and for taste some camera shake to finish off the visual effect. Now, this is what you get for parking your motorcycle, probably legally, in the streets of Melbourne. Now you can make this look a whole lot cooler if you gather all your friends and get them to run around screaming or jump away from whatever it is you're blowing up, but for this tutorial let's just focus on creating the explosion effect for the motorcycle inside of Adobe After Effects. Here's the handheld shot with a doomed motorcycle. Now I did not film this shot with the intention of adding any visual effects, so the footage is not really ideal. It's handheld and shaky and I don't have a clean plate, which is the same shot without the motorcycle in it. If I was filming this scene with the intention of blowing up the motorcycle, honestly I'd just shoot the whole footage without the motorcycle in it, create a 3D model, place it in the right spot and blow it up. However, you demand it will blow up the motorcycle, so let's see what we can get out of this piece of footage. First we need to track our footage. Apply the 3D camera tracker from the effects and presets panel to the clip. Now go, have a cup of coffee or some juice or whatever floats your boat and come back once the tracker is done doing its thing. Hopefully all went well and you should now see a large number of 3D track points overlaid onto your footage. Let's create a marker so we can identify where the motorcycle is in our 3D environment. Select the point on the body of the motorcycle, right click it and create a null object as well as a camera. I'm going to call the null object motorcycle marker. Now I mentioned I do not actually have a shot without the motorcycle in it, so what I did was to export this frame from the video and edit out the motorcycle manually in Photoshop. Ideally you'd want to have a photo or a video of the scene without the vehicle you want to blow up. This is called a clean plate and you want to record this clean plate at the same time you're filming your actual scene. Add this clean plate layer into your composition and trim it down to start exactly when you want the explosion to tear the motorcycle apart. If we now scrub through the footage, the motorcycle disappears, but the moment the clean plate becomes visible, the video seems to freeze. What we actually need to do is position our clean plate inside our 3D scene, right in front of the motorcycle. For this, turn the layer into a 3D layer and reveal the position property. Also reveal the position property on the camera and copy the current position of the camera across to the position of the clean plate. Watch out that you don't copy any actual keyframes across. Since the camera is animated, I am doing this manually for the X, Y and Z coordinate. Next, reveal the orientation property and copy it across from the camera onto the clean plate. Again, I am doing this one value at a time to not copy any keyframes across. If we now go to the top view, we should see the clean plate layer and the camera at the exact same position. Quite a bit in front of the camera, we can see the motorcycle marker null object. We now want to move our clean plate forward to just before the marker for the motorcycle. This will place the layer in 3D space at a position just before the motorcycle. Return to your active camera view and scale the clean plate up to fit exactly over your composition. The layer should hide the motorcycle perfectly if you turn the visibility on or off. Lower the opacity of the clean plate and then draw a rough mask around the motorcycle. I'm also going to give the mask a bit of feathering just to blend it in a bit better. If you bring the opacity back to 100%, the motorcycle should be fully hidden and scrubbing through the footage, the motorcycle should remain invisible for the rest of the moving shot. Now this is not perfect because the clean plate is just a flat layer standing at the same position as the motorcycle and as the camera moves, it starts to misalign with the background elements, for example the pillars. We can fix this up to some degree by animating the position of the clean plate to better match the element it is covering up. I'm also going to expand the mask a little bit to ensure the motorcycle remains fully hidden. 
Uh, still not perfect, but for our purpose this should be sufficient. Let's start destroying the motorcycle. I have a single frame here that contains the motorcycle before I removed it to create my clean plate. Add it into your composition and trim it to start at the exact same time as your clean plate. Turn it into a 3D layer and copy the position, orientation and scale from your clean plate layer onto this new layer. It should now roughly look as if the motorcycle was back in its original spot. We will soon duplicate this layer to create the charred remains of our motorcycle, so let's darken it a bit. For this, apply a hue and saturation effect and animate it to desaturate and darken the layer almost entirely. Let's call this layer chunk 1. Use a mask to cut out a big chunk of the motorcycle. I will cut out almost the entire left half. Next, we want to animate this chunk to be rocked by the explosion. Just beware, before you start keyframing the position and rotation, grab the pen behind tool and move the anchor point into the middle of the fragment. Now animate the position and rotation to make the chunk break off the motorcycle as it darkens. Ensure it does not accidentally slip behind the cover up layers that we've already set up. Actually, I think I'll make the animation a little bit faster. Now duplicate the layer. It should already be called chunk 2. Delete the mask we already created and draw a new mask around a different part of the motorcycle. This time I will use most of the right half except for the wheel, which I will split off separately. Like before, move the anchor to the center of the chunk and animate it to be pushed to the side by the power of the explosion. Repeat the same process for the front wheel. Rather than just have it drop off slightly, I'm going to have the wheel spin wildly and be flung out of the scene on the right side to make the explosion appear more energetic. And again, let's create yet another chunk. This one, the seat, I'm going to animate to fly towards and past the camera to give the effect a bit more depth and make it look a bit more dangerous. Finally, I'm also going to create one chunk for the tail and fling it off to the left side when the explosion hits. Finally, enable motion blur for all of the chunks we created. Playing back our animation, the motorcycle should break apart and darken nicely just in time for our explosion. Let's add that explosion so the motorcycle looks like it's not just falling apart due to old age. I am going to use stock footage elements from Action Essentials 2 by Video Copilot because I think it's just probably the best stuff you can find, but I've included a link to some free elements in the description of this video. Drag your explosion element into your composition and time it to kick in exactly at the moment the bike breaks apart. Turn it into a 3D layer and using the top view, move it to the position indicated by the motorcycle marker null object, just like we did with the clean plate. Return to the active camera view and scale up the explosion to fit in nicely with your scene. Position it so it sits just in front of all the chunks we created for the motorcycle. I'm actually going to add a second explosion element. A simple way to do this is to duplicate the explosion layer we already added, select it and then drag your new stock footage onto it while holding down the ALT key. This will replace the contents of the selected layer without changing its position in the scene or any of its properties. Because this is a different explosion element, let's position it to sit a bit better on top of the motorcycle. I'm also going to change the blend mode of this layer to add to blend it nicely with the layer underneath and give some more intensity to the explosion. Next, let's add the light that you would see if the bike was really disappearing into a ball of fire. What we will do is create some layers to be used as mats for our actual lighting. We first want to define with simple white solids the area where the final lighting will appear. For this, select your track footage and the 3D camera tracker effect assigned to it to reveal all of the 3D track points. Move your cursor over the ground in the scene until you see a bullseye that matches the ground the motorcycle stands on. Right click on it and create a new solid. Now I don't know why this one is blue, but let's open the settings for this solid by selecting it and pressing Ctrl Shift Y. Change its color to white and call it light floor. Next scale it up to cover most of the ground in the scene. Add a rough mask to the solid over the areas that would receive all of the light and feather it out a little bit. Scrub through your composition to ensure the layer and the mask cover all of the areas you want to receive light in the final effect. I'm just going to tweak the left side a little bit. Trim the start of this light floor layer because we don't need to see it until the explosion becomes visible. Now animate the opacity of this layer to fade in when the explosion strikes and then fade out again very slowly as the fireball disappears. I'm actually going to add a thin mask just on the curb because this area would remain in the shadow and it will make the light look a little more realistic. Set the mask mode to subtract to remove the curb part from the light floor layer and add a tiny bit of feathering.
Yes, I know it's way too wide, but as I said, we will use this layer as a mat, not as the actual lighting. Now repeat the process and create a light layer for the back wall of the scene. Add masks with different opacities for the background elements, depending on how far they are away from the explosion. This will simply add a little bit more realism to the effect. Let's have a look at the lighting mats we created. Yep, that's not bad. Actually, I will move those lighting layers below all the fragments we created for the motorcycle. For the actual lighting layers, we want to use our base footage with the bicycle removed from the scene. This means that we need to pre-compose our base footage, the camera and the clean plate layer we added to hide the motorcycle. Because we have other 3D elements in this composition and they depend on the camera, we first need to duplicate our camera. Now select the cover up layer, the original camera and the original footage layer and pre-compose them by pressing Ctrl Shift C. I will call this composition Motorcycle Vanishing. Duplicate the Motorcycle Vanishing composition, move it below your light floor layer and set the blend mode to add to create the first lighting layer. Then set the track mat to alpha. This will cause the light floor layer to be turned into matte and automatically become invisible. The new lighting layer will be visible wherever the layer directly above it is opaque, so the white of our light floor layer now controls how strongly we see the additive light. Duplicate the motorcycle vanishing layer again, make sure it's just below the light back layer, is set to additive blending and the track mat is set to alpha. Also make sure that your light back layer, which is now used as a mat, is invisible. That looks quite cool, but I think the lighting looks a little bit too cold. Let's add a bit of warmth to the light to match our explosion. For this, simply add a tint effect to your lighting layer. Change the map white to color to yellow or orange to match your fireball. Apply the same tint effect also to the lighting layer for the floor. It's a pretty cool effect already, but let's make it even cooler. Let's add some more shrapnel particles to the explosion. I will disable the visibility of the explosion layers just so it's easier for us to see what is going on. We want our shrapnel particles to be bits and pieces of the motorcycle and for this we will first need to create a small composition that contains all the images we want the particles to have. I'm going to take the image of my motorcycle and create a new composition. You can do this by dragging the image onto the create new composition icon. Reduce the duration of the composition to just a few frames. Trim down the image layer to be only a single frame long. Just like before, apply a hue and saturation effect to the layer and bring down the saturation and lightness to make the bike look dark and charred. Then duplicate the layer a few times and shift each frame over to stagger them until your composition is filmed with single frame layers. Now go through the individual layers and cut out a different small piece of the motorcycle for each layer. These bits will be the shrapnel particles we will spawn for our explosion, so I recommend picking parts that aren't too distinct. Finally move all of the motorcycle bits into the center of the composition. Open your composition settings and reduce the resolution to just fit around the layers. I will also rename the composition to Shrapnel Particle. You should end up with a small composition with one frame for each different motorcycle fragment. Go back to your main composition and drag the Shrapnel Particle composition we just created into it. This is important, ensure the layer starts exactly when the explosion hits. Disable the visibility on the Shrapnel Particle layer. Create a new solid and call it Shrapnel. Apply the CC particle word effect to the layer. Now I wish the particle word effect would use the same scale as the scene, but unfortunately it does not. This means that you will have to open up the producer options and move the producer in X, Y and Z coordinate manually to position it as best as you can at the same position as the bike. Again, this layer does not need to start until the explosion hits. Ensure the particle layer starts at the same time as your explosion and this is important, at the same time as the shrapnel particle composition. Scrub through your footage to make sure it sits at the right depth and follows your shot correctly. I might just push it back into the scene a little bit more. Now animate the birth rate to start at 0. Move forward one frame and set the birth rate to maybe about 3. Move forward another two frames and set it back to 0. This will cause a small burst of particles to be emitted from the producer. Let's change the particle to use the frames of our shrapnel particle composition. Open the particle options and change the particle type to textured disk. Expand the texture. Set the texture layer to the shrapnel particle and the texture time to birth. Birth tells all particles emitted at this moment to take the current frame from the texture layer and hold the image. This is why it's so important to have the shrapnel particle layer positioned at the moment you are emitting the particles. 
If it's not at the right time, the particles will not be able to select a frame when they are spawned and will become invisible. Now change the start and death size to something fairly big like 10 and change the birth and death color to white since we don't want to tint our particles. They're pretty black already. Also set the opacity to 100% because we do not want our shrapnel to be semi-transparent. Now open the physics tab in the CC particle world effect and ensure the animation is set to explosive. Increase the velocity to around 30 to have the particles shoot out from the motorcycle when it blows up. Scrub through your footage and tweak as required. Nice. I will also enable the motion blur option on the particle layer to make it look a little bit more realistic. Let's re-enable the explosion layers and check out what we've got so far. Actually, let's also quickly add some shadows to the particles. Simply duplicate the shrapnel layer and call it shrapnel shadows. Move this layer below the particles, the explosions and the animated chunks of the motorcycle, just above the lighting layers. We now need to position this layer on the floor. We already have a layer that is positioned on the floor, our light floor layer. Turn the shrapnel shadows layer into a 3D layer and copy the position and orientation from the light floor layer onto it. The shadows layer should now sit nicely on the ground. We just need to position it a little bit better and scale it up to suit our scene. Search for the fast blur effect and apply it to the shadows layer. Increase the blurriness until your shadows are nicely blurred out. Because I think the shadows are a bit too strong, I will also lower the opacity of the layer to around 50%. Sweet, shrapnel particles and shadows added into our scene. Because no vehicle explodes without some dark black smoke, let's add a black smoke cloud in between the explosions. For this, I'm going to drag the smoke charge stock footage into my composition and time it to start exactly at the same time as the explosions. Now, for one, this smoke charge is very slow and I want to speed it up to match the fireball a bit better. For this, you can right click the layer and select time, time stretch. I'm going to speed the layer up to 30% of the original duration. This seems much better. Now, the other problem is that the smoke is all white and we want an angry black cloud. We can fix this quite easily by applying a brightness and contrast effect to our smoke layer and reducing the brightness and contrast to minus 100. Next, add a curves adjustment to the smoke charge and bump up the alpha channel to make the smoke a little bit more opaque and not so dainty. We want angry smoke, damn it! Now, I can see some dark artifacts around the edges of the layer and the smoke charge is cut off at the bottom, so I will add a quick mask to the layer and feather it out to smoothly cut out just the black cloud of smoke. We now need to position this smoke element in our explosion. We've done this many times before. Simply turn the layer into a 3D layer and copy the position and orientation of one of your already placed explosion layers over to the smoke layer. Scale the layer up and position it to sit nicely just between the two explosion elements. Awesome, I'm quite happy with this result. Remember, you can add as many elements into your scene as you need to make the explosion look exactly like you want. Finally, let's add some camera shake to finish off this effect. Select all layers and pre-compose them. I will call this composition Motorcycle Explosion. Now we will add the camera shake exactly like I did in my basics explosion tutorial. First add a slider control effect to the layer. Reveal the position property of the layer and alt click on the stopwatch icon to enable the expression editor. Into the text field that appears type wiggle open bracket 20 comma and then use the pick whip icon to select the value of the slider effect to insert it into the expression. Finish the expression off with close bracket semicolon. The value of the slider now controls the amount of random offset that will be applied to the position of the explosion layer. Animate the slider to increase from 0 to around 100 when the explosion hits and then slowly decrease back to 0. This will cause the layer to shake violently when the explosion hits and then subside. Now you will see the background of the composition when the layer is being moved around but you can fix this easily simply by scaling the layer up as needed. Finally enable motion blur on the layer Go to the start of your composition and play back your final explosion effect. Take that motorcycle! I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and as always please leave any comments, questions or suggestions in the section below. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, like or share. It really helps out a lot with the channel and I greatly appreciate all of the support. And if you're feeling particularly creepy, you can also come and stalk me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later.